Shalom, shalom, good morning. It is Monday, September 30th. Uh, closing out real quickly, but according to the Bible's calendar, we got a little bit more time before the close of this year. So, um, this letter from God entry is called Walking in the Quietness. Hold on, give me one second. And guys, if you are watching live, awesome. And if you miss me, welcome to the replay. All right. Um, I want to put the picture in the comments. Oh, it's not going to let me while I'm live. Sorry about that. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly. I got these dang... <laughs> earbuds in to make sure that you hear me because sometimes they're not that that clear so all right walking in the quietness so this has really been a blessing to me um, and to others as I understand it and um, you know spending time with the Lord is such a it's such a beautiful thing I mean there's really nothing there's really nothing like it really nothing like it and um, I'm just blessed and honored to be able to share this with you guys um, stand by I'm trying to find this though here we go all right, we are ready. Yeah, you know, all of the stuff they make you do before, so you got to do it. All right, so I want to read this, and no, I have not read it. Normally when I'm on here, the first time that I'm hearing it is when I'm reading it to you, my beautiful audience. Hope you're having an amazing day. I hope your Shabbat was, uh, was uh, well, and you were well rested. And so, um, yeah. All right, so, walking in the quietness. All right, so it says, the psalm, and we're going from Psalm 15 and 2. Can I say something? I see people saying Psalms 143, Psalms, it's only one psalm. Unless you're going to reference more than one psalm, it's not psalms. Listen, somebody's got to, listen, we're here to iron sharpens iron, right? Friends don't let friends drive drunk, right? <laughs> so it's not Psalms 14, it's Psalm. It's only one Psalm. Psalms is plural. If you're only reading one Psalm, then it's just Psalm. It's like I lost my shoe or I lost my shoes. It's either one or the other. You can't say shoes if it's only one shoe. Does that make sense? I'm, listen, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be helpful. All right, beloved. All right, so it's Psalm 15 and 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. All right, so this letter from God is called again, Walking in the Quietness. All right, come walk with me in the quietness of a righteous heart. Righteous, righteousness cleanses the heart of infections. It removes the heart parasites that dig their way into the secret places. I will not leave you bleeding, hurting, or confused. I will heal the hidden and invisible parts of you, even the unreachable you, the part of you that is hidden from your eyes. I will never abandon you to a life of nothingness. You will become steady, reliable, and completely trustworthy. I am putting steel bars into your back and your spiritual foundation. I am pouring heavenly concrete into your life. When the storms come, you will be at rest. Not one thing you love shall be hurt or destroyed. Your middle name is comfort. And your last name is protection. Many will want to come and live at your house because they will feel me there walking in the quietness of your soul, 
creating an atmosphere of love in your home. They will feel my strength in their hearts and my comfort for their pain. Your life will be a testimony to the world of what I can do through a totally yielded vessel. Stand in your encouragement. Wow, that was good. And I'm going to take that um, for myself. I, I, I really needed that right now. You guys have no idea. I really, really need that right now. So, um, so, walking in the quietness. I guess I could expound upon that a little bit more, but I think that it is, I think that it's 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 enough. It's enough. It's enough. Hey Virginia, how are you, beloved? So it's a beautiful, beautiful way to begin the day. Reading letters from God. Nice devotional. One letter every day. If you got a letter from the Lord, what would he say to you? How would he encourage you? And so it's a devotion that, it, and it works like a prompt. So I don't, I don't want people to think this literally is a letter from God. No, there are scriptures in here. And what's taken out of it is the heart of the scripture. Um, hey, shalom, beloved. So it's a prompt, and it gets you to start speaking back to the Lord to, to be also encouraged. It is, uh, I like for instance, I have a journal and the journal the Lord had me to do, well, I have several, <laughs> and the one that the Lord had me to create, he wanted me to put writing prompts in it because some people who have journals or they don't buy a journal because they don't know what to say. They don't know what to write. But when you have a prompt, it prompts you to write something that prompts you to pray. Does that make sense? So um, the other day I read from Letters from God and it said the undisturbed soul. And I'm still soaking and meditating on that because when you have an undisturbed soul, it makes it easier to walk in the quietness of the Lord's spirit. And undisturbed means it's not distracted, it's not bothered, and it's not altered. And sometimes we have to fight to stay in that place of quietness and in that place of shalom. This is why we get dressed in the full armor of God daily. And it's not by just saying, I put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. <laughs> it sounds good, but it's a lifestyle. Does that make sense? It's how you think. Your mind is to be transformed and renewed by his word. That's your helmet of salvation. The belt of truth holds everything together, which means you can't compromise, beloved. You just can't. Because the belt falls off once you compromise. All right. So the shield of faith. A lot of people, they believe for somebody else, but they don't believe God for themselves. That's not the shield of faith. A shield is to protect you from words that cause seeds of doubt and fear and insecurity. So you got to stay dressed. You put up the shield of faith where which you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, right? And you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hey, Gloria. Shalom. Good morning, beloved. So... It is not enough to just mouth the words. I put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shield of faith where you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. On my feet are the shoes or the sandals of shalom. This is a lifestyle, beloved. It's what you do. It's how you live on a day-to-day -day basis. Do not let there be a chink in your armor because if there's compromise, the belt it will slip off. And it's the belt that you you gird you gird it around your loins, you know, and this is the part of your 
you're getting dressed, you're living for God, the way you think, the way you speak, the way you handle people, the way you react to people. I mean, we talk kingdom, but are we really doing kingdom? It's a lifestyle. It's a thought process. Are you hearing me? So, walking in the quietness. Walking in the quietness. I'm trying to look at my phone to see. Yes, gird up my lungs. Yes. Yes, Gloria, we have to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Okay? <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to be coming on, and if you're not a part of my group, Intimacy with God, and I know the people from Intimacy with God is actually watching this, but if you're not a part of my group, Intimacy with God, please go in there. I started a conversation. Um, a few days ago, I have not revisited. I just wanted to ask some questions about it. And I wanted to know, I wanted to know if anyone was dealing with or have they heard of sleep paralysis? If you have not heard about that, please put that in the comments. Um, if you've experienced it, if you used to experience it, put that in the comments. Because I want to go back over and talk about it. And I did get a lot of uh, input in my intimacy with God. It seems like the other group didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> or they just didn't know. Or maybe they're just not interested. Oh, Gloria, you never heard of it? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, um... I was thinking if I wanted to talk about it here. Because... Because I don't want to like drop it and then leave it. But I will say this. Um, sleep paralysis, I was not familiar with that term. I didn't know about it. I, I knew about it. I knew about the experience. I knew that it could happen to people. Um, I knew that it happened to me. But I did not know that's what, that was the term. It's when you go to sleep, you're dreaming, or you're falling asleep, or you're just waking up, and then um, it feels like something somebody is holding you down you're aware you can move your eyes but you cannot talk and you cannot move and you will stay that way for uh, maybe a minute or so but it'll seem like forever you're trying to talk you're trying to call out the name of the Lord you can't nothing comes out and again you cannot move but your eyes like you can scan the room and sometimes you will see, or you will feel, or you will sense um, darkness or a presence. And, um, but I'll talk more about that later. But I wanted to know who's experienced it. Has it happened to you? Um, did it stop happening? Um, is it still happening? So that was my question. That was my question. So... Um, you have? Okay. All right, we're going to talk about that. So, um, and I'll probably talk about that over in the chamber room experience. Um, oh, you said long ago. Okay. All right. Well, I know people that it still happens to. It started when they were kids, and they're adults, and it's still happening. So, I, I'm trying to talk about it happening, it stops happening, and why some people it continues to happen to. So I wanna talk about that, and there's some books on it. Um, I've read some books on it, and um, I'll have an opinion about those books as well. All right, so until then, we are gonna walk in the quietness. We're gonna sit in the seats of love, of grace, of mercy, of forgiveness. We gotta sit in the seat of forgiveness. And we want to make sure, beloved, that we continue in the word, not, not just hearing the word. We don't wanna just parrot what we hear, but we wanna live the life shielded in righteousness, covered 
walk in any mantled in, mantled in prayer. All right, so, all right, so um, I got it for today. Hey, Corey, how are you, beloved? So, um, again, if you don't have the book, Letters from God, please get it. Please, please, please get it. Um, I'm going to try to put the link in the chat. I always put it in here. And then I always have somebody that comes and asks me about it on a on a new one. But yeah, so today's Letters from God is called Walking in the Quietness. I'm going to put the link in here. Oh my goodness, all of the things I got to go through. Is it going to let me put it in? Yay! Oh, he missed it. Yeah, well, praise God for the replay. <laughs> um, okay, there it is. I'm going to pin it. It is there. Yay. All right, so uh, remember what I said about putting on the full armor of God. It's not just repeating the words. It's the lifestyle. It's the way you think. It's the way you respond to people. It's the way you behave. Remember the Bible says, and David behaved himself wisely. It's my pleasure. Behave yourselves wisely. Let us do that with intention. I know that it's hard sometimes, and it's hard to love the unlovable. And it is, I mean, there are a lot of difficult places. But Yeshua says in Nathayahu, chapter 7, verse 14, he said, the road that leads to life, the chai, chai the shalom, life and peace, is a narrow road. It's hard. Because people are team too much. But you know what? It also says something about us. We have to look at us. Because love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long suffering. Oh my God. Love does not take an account of wrong. So when people are doing team too much, that's an opportunity. Remember the Bible says those that are spiritual, what are we supposed to do? Those that are spiritual, what? Restore. It's on us. We cannot be saved for other people. We can only live our own lives, submit to God, resist the devil, resist his antics, resist, resist, resist. Because remember, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not really them. But the devil wants us to focus on them. Does that make sense? All right, guys, let me get out of here. We will revisit this later. So we're going to talk about um, the sleep paralysis thing, and we're going to talk about how we really, really, really need to understand what it is to get dressed in the full armor, what each piece means, and how we do that. Um, this is a life application thing. We're all flawed. We all have things going on. But our, it, is, it is our love that makes us wait for others. And they're supposed to wait for us. Remember, iron sharpens iron. So if my sister has something, I should be patient enough to listen to it and to consider it. And then see where I am in it. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Or maybe it's just the word of God. Who knows? All right. All right, I'm getting hungry. I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to make my smoothie. I don't know what kind I'm going to make. But there'll be plenty of protein in it. That's for sure. Because I need my energy. Some matcha. Some moringa. Some prunes. Some bananas. Some pineapple. Some spirulina. Some ginger. You got to have ginger. You have all that. You better put some ginger in it. 
and some monk fruit and some, no, monk fruit or agave. Mm. We'll see. And, um, and some cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon. All right, so that's what I'm going to have. Maybe I'll take a picture of it after I make it and post it if you act right. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. I love you with the love of the Lord. This is Dr. Nadia Bhatt Yehuda bringing you into the truth. It's the truth that you embrace that makes you free. I will see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom.